je vais inviter Madame Moït Jagar Karer euh, de l'Institut pour la, la langue slovène de nous parler des dictionnaires terminologiques et du conseil en terminologie. Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm really glad to be here today at this interesting conference. Um, and today I'm going to talk about two different terminological activities. Firstly, I will talk about um, terminological dictionaries that we compile at terminological section at the Institute of the Slovenian Language. And then I will talk about our web-based terminological counseling service uh, which was intended for experts with existing terminological problems. So let's get started. Uh, we can say that in Slovenia, the concern for terminology has had a long tradition. Uh, but when it comes to terminology, the Slovenian language, despite having only approximately two million speakers, has to deal with the same issues as any other language. Um, so um, in the last 15 years, we have published 15 um, terminological dictionaries from various subject fields. Uh, here, three most uh, recent ones are listed. Uh, terminological dictionary of legal terminology and terminological dictionary of automatic control systems and robotics, uh, second edition in 2018, and terminological dictionary of urban planning in 2016. Uh, the work of terminological section is presented on the web page called Terminologische. Um, and here we can find, uh, among other things, uh, 13 terminological dictionaries in electronic form. Uh, on this si slide, you can see our most recent dictionary. I already mentioned it. So the second edition of terminological dictionary of automatic control systems and robotics. Uh, and on the right, you can see the search engine um, it is possible to search by entry, uh, by term, uh, by the word in definition, and uh, by foreign language equivalent as well. Uh, there are usually English equivalents, but in some dictionaries we have German, uh, Italian, French, or Latin equivalents as well. Um, for example, if we search for the word system, it is system in English, uh, we get 92 hits. Uh, the first entry is system, and then is followed by 91 uh, terms which contain the word system. Uh, so next entry, you can see it here, is autonomni mobilni system, um, in which system is a part of the term. Um, and here we, see, we can see definition and the English equivalent. Of course, um, we can start searching with the English word as well. It is actually quite common for experts to start searching with English term because they're familiar with it and they can't remember the Slovenian term. Uh, so all terminological dictionaries are also part of the dictionary portal FRAN, which brings together all dictionaries that were, uh, that were made or are currently under development at the Fran, Fran Ramos Institute of the Slovenian language. Uh, here one can find uh, general dictionaries like the dictionary of the of the Slovenian standard language or Slovenian normative guide, etymological, historical, dialectal dictionaries, and so on. At the moment, Fran contains more than 600,000 dictionary entries. So let's say that we're interested in the word tableta, that's tablet or pill in English. Um, we, we will get hits from various dictionaries, like for the dictionary of the Slovenian standard language, Slovenian normative guide, etymological dictionary, and of course, from terminological dictionaries as well. In this case, from the pharmaceutical terminological dictionary. Uh, so if we click on this entry, we are transferred to terminologische, to the pharmaceutical terminological dictionary. And then we can continue searching here in. Uh, pharmaceutical terminological dictionary, or we can go back to Fran and search, I don't know, for etymology of the word or some other things. 
Um, well, let me present some aspects of our terminological dictionaries. The intended primary user of our dictionaries are experts. And when I speak about experts, I mean experts of particular subject fields, like botanists, urban pla planners, geographers, and others. Uh, of course, there are also other users of our dictionaries, especially translators, language editors, journalists, and others. Um, but it is important that they are aware of the fact that they're using a specific type of dictionary, the one that requires at least some prior no knowledge of a particular subject field. Um, when compiling a terminological dictionary, we always cooperate with a group of experts, mostly university professors or researchers. Uh, the task of the terminologist is to organize the terminological work, take care of the co of coherence of the concept system, deal with the eventual inconsistencies. Um, educational background of terminologists at the Institute of the Slovenian Language is mostly linguistics. Experts, on the other hand, have knowledge about concepts and concept system of their own subject field, so they're responsible for reliable definitions and for foreign language equivalents. Um, it is very important that we include verified terms in other languages, not just translations of term word for word. Uh, we use a conceptual approach, but we do consider usage as well. So for each dictionary, we make a specialized corpus, then we extract term candidates, check them with experts, and make a word list in order to start terminological work. When we have a list of terms that are common in specialized texts, um, we continue with building a terminological system based on the conceptual system. So related terms are always treated together. Um, normative choices are based on terminological agreement among uh, experts, in our case, of course, among authors of a, a certain dictionary. So I guess the big question is, how can quality of the terminological dictionaries be guaranteed? So here are some possible answers. In our experience, terminological dictionaries should contain experts' knowledge and terminologists' know-how. Furthermore, they should be accurate and linguistically correct. Ideally, they should be up to date and revised regularly. Uh, and finally, after they are published, they should be publicly available. Uh, of course, terminological dictionaries are not available for all subject fields. And even when a terminological dictionary for a specific subject field exists, there is a chance that it does not contain the most up to date concepts. Uh, so, in 2013, we decided to launch another terminological activity, a terminology counseling service. Uh, it is a web-based service and it's free of charge. We get around 60 terminological questions per year, which doesn't sound much, but it's actually more than one per week. Um, and number of questions is still growing. We can find terminology counseling service on Terminologische. Um, on the right, on the right side of the page, there is a form to fill. So uh, required fields are name and surname uh, of the person who asks a question, their email, because we answer person personally via email, and description of the terminological problem. Optional fields comprise a list of already existing terms for a particular concept and examples of use, preferably with links, of course. Uh, we also publish questions and answers uh, without the identity of the asker. Um, as a result, we have created a collection of existing terminological problems that can be useful for other users with the same problem. Um, and we can find all these uh, terms uh, if we uh, use portal Fran as well. So uh, we are glad to hear that our advice is often accepted and respected even in situations which are not related to the exact same question. In this case, uh, here on slide, we were asked which of the three Slovenian terms is the most appropriate for the English term regulatory authority. Um, so let me add some more information about our counseling service. Um, it is intended primarily for experts with existent, sometimes even urgent, terminological problems. That said, a lot of terminological questions come from translators and language editors. This is, of course, expected because translators and language editors encounter different terminological problems on, on 
at their work on a daily basis. Uh, but there is often a problem. Since we cannot expect translators to be experts in all subject fields they are dealing with, and we terminologists are not experts either, it is sometimes hard to properly understand the concept. So, in this case, we usually have to ask an expert or even more experts for help. Uh, to add to the com complexity, questions posed are usually not trivial because askers have already at least Googled the term and the context before asking us a question. Um, well, I think it is important that all terminologists of our terminology section are involved. We discuss each terminological problem and try to find the best solution together. So we don't necessarily agree in the beginning <laughs> of a discussion, but at the end we always somehow come with a consensual solution. Uh, typically, there are two types of questions. Uh, the first one is, and the English term X is defined as something. I need to find an adequate Slovenian term. Please help. And the second one is for the concept defined as something, there are three different terms in Slovenian. Which of these do you think is the most appropriate? Mm, because we want to base our decisions, our advices, on terminological arguments, we use some basic terminolo terminology principles. So, preferred terms should be well established. That means it is often used in specialized texts. In, and in case of more, of more synonyms, the preferred term is the term that is most commonly used in specialized texts. We often add some typical examples of use. Uh, the second principle means that the term should be economical, that is relatively short. Or in the case of more synonyms, the preferred term is the term that is shorter. Uh, the third one is that the term should be also linguistically adequate, which means that the term must be in accordance with the linguistic system of the language as a whole. Um, sometimes we use the principle of linguistic culture, according to which priority is given to the term of the domestic origin. That said, I have to stress that terminology principles should not be used mechanically. It is always necessary to consider which terminological principle has priority in a particular case. So let's ask ourselves again, how can quality of the terminological counseling service be guaranteed? Uh, these are our experiences. The answer should be given relatively quickly. The answer should be supported by arguments that are based on terminological principles and some examples of use. It should be publicly available so that other users with the same problem can find it. So at the end, I, I would like to briefly compare both terminological activities. Uh, when compiling a terminological dictionary, uh, terminology of a subject field uh, is seen as a whole. So it is important to consider the place of a concept in a concept system. When we are ask, asking, uh, answering terminological questions, we are dealing with one existent terminological problem, like finding a Slovenian term for a new concept. A dictionary work, we are focused on a particular subject field. At counseling service, we get questions from very different subject fields. Um, Next one is um, dictionary work is a teamwork, so terminologists and a group of experts are working together. At counseling service, an expert asks a group of terminologists a terminological question. And the last one, usually it takes more than three years from the beginning of the, uh, to the end of the dictionary project, so we can say it's actually a long-term project. On the other hand, it usually takes less than three days to prepare a coordinated answer and publish it. Um, to sum up, uh, compiling a terminological dictionary and answering terminological questions um, are two very different terminological activities, but the goal is actually the same, finding the most suitable term for a concept or more concepts using all accessible information and combining knowledge of experts and terminologists. So, thank you for your attention. Je remercie aussi Marta pour sa présentation. Est-ce qu'il y a des questions Nous avons plus de temps pour les questions parce qu'elle a été vraiment très concise. Nous avons du temps pour cinq minutes de questions. 
S'il n'y a pas de questions, est-ce que je peux... Oui, Do you connect the discussion to the term entry in your term base? Um, it, it is possible to find. We always um, put a preferred term in the, as a title of the um, of ad advice, and it's possible to find it uh, through Portal Fran. So, if someone um, is searching for this term, he will find our advice. It's not uh, it's not um, like a entry in a dictionary, but he will find uh, the whole advice. Euh, J'aurais oui, aussi une question. Je sais que normalement le modérateur n'a pas posé de questions, mais j'ose en poser une parce que cela me tient vraiment à cœur. Donc, euh, euh, à quel moment vous décidez que le critère de l'exactitude linguistique dans le respect de la langue d'accueil, le, le respect du slovène hein, dans votre cas, mm -hmm. donc le choix du terme national, mettons, mm -hmm. à, à quel moment vous décidez que ce critère peut être euh, relativisé, donc n'est pas un critère essentiel donc, et su, selon quel oui. euh, voilà. Et selon quel, euh, donc, dans quel contexte Est-ce que vous privilégiez euh, plutôt le critère instrumental, donc, que les spécialistes se comprennent entre eux Alors, évidemment, les emprunts à l'anglais <rire> devraient être majoritaires, ce qui est étrange. Can you translate it for me Yes. Do, do, do you, when do you give up the... Uh, the linguistic uh, mm -hmm. uh, adequacy. No, when you say it's it's okay to go with a loan word, uh -huh. and, yeah, that's and in what scenario? <laughs> that's a that's a very good question <laughs> because, like in Latvia, we have uh, a lot of people who think that loan words are not appropriate and uh, um, we shouldn't use them. But in terminology, there are really a lot of loan words. So um, we say that if. Uh, term is already well established. It doesn't matter if it's not of domestic <coughs> origin, if mm -hmm. it's a loan word, mm -hmm. we accept it anyway. Because otherwise we would uh, have a lot of problems with, uh, with uh, terminology, yeah. I understand, and you decide that it is well established on frequency? Yes, yes, but uh, okay. at the same time when we are, um, when we need a new term, uh, there is no reason that we wouldn't um, use this, uh, this principle, so we try to find the word which is, which is not a loan word, which is uh, of you. Slovenian origin. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any, some questions, please, Sandra? Okay, a, sh a short one, yes. I want to come back to something you said. Mm -hmm. uh, experts were responsible for definitions. Mm -hmm. This is understandable. Uh, and then they were also responsible for f equivalence in foreign languages. Yes. Is, this, is this not asking too much of experts? Um, usually not, <laughs> because <laughs> we always, when we choose um, a group of, uh, of um, experts, we always ask them which language do you know, do, do you, um, um, terminology in which language is fa uh, do you familiar with? And they usually say English, of course. And they're, um, in our experiences, they're really um, fluent in English terminology. So that, yeah, it's better than, we, we had some um, experiences with translating and the results weren't the best, so. Est-ce qu'il y a encore des questions? Yeah, me. Sandra. Moïtia, first of all, thank you very much for the great presentation. Mm -hmm. And makes me think that we have some, lots of similarity with the way, way of working uh, on terminology in TermCAD. And I have one question. Um, when, when you were talking about uh, giving advice and receiving questions, do you get also questions by Twitter? Uh, no. Because no. Do, do you have mm -hmm. an uh, account, right? Uh, no, we have an account on Facebook, but we don't have one on Twitter. So okay, maybe okay. Maybe and it's in, a, in thank Facebook? you for suggestion. Do you <laughs> No, because uh, <laughs> since, uh, for years, more or less, we mm -hmm. are like having two ways mm -hmm. of receiving questions. Mm -hmm. Once, mm -hmm. like yours, by a form, mm -hmm. blah, blah. And then uh, also the users uh, ask their questions uh, by Twitter. Uh -huh. And then it's like, it's, it's a kind of problem because mm -hmm. 
at, as you more or less, we have like an average of answering mm -hmm. by form uh, between one or three days, like you more mm -hmm. or less. But in Twitter, the users are more mm -hmm. anxious mm -hmm. and they expect <laughs> to have the answer, yeah. not the same day, during uh -huh. the morning or in the afternoon. Uh -huh. where <laughs> so it's, it's, it's hard to, yeah. to squeeze this in our terminological mm -hmm. ways of uh, process. Mm -hmm. So it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. if we can share <laughs> his experience. Thank you for sharing Okay, okay. Thank yeah. you so much. Bon, oui, une dernière question de Monsieur Kaunis. One, ve one very small comment. Uh, in Latvia, we have very active Twitter and Facebook discussions regarding terminology. Mm -hmm. And there are a few people which are uh, national-wide experts, mm -hmm. and uh, they react very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, answers uh, are really good, and people can rely. And also mm -hmm. these people, these experts, they know where to find answers, because sometimes mm -hmm. people asking about things which are out there, but uh, um, just hidden in some uh, resources. Mm -hmm. So at least in, in Latvia, we, we uh, kind of also thinking to promote this activity and, and because, yeah, people asking for uh, mm -hmm. answers right now, mm -hmm. that's, that's true. Uh, Thank agree. you for yeah. the comment. Uh, and the quick reaction uh, time is really important. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to thank you. Our <laughs>